At home and at work, I'm sure you often repeat many series of steps, typically at regular frequencies and involving multiple tools. Personally, I aggregate financial transactions from multiple sources and then update their statuses as they're processed. I compose social media posts, then publish them to their respective platforms in real time, and I schedule meetings in one app and then plan them in another. So if you're like me, these and other standard procedures typically include Notion. As I described in my previous Zapier post, the all-in-one productivity tool has become the operating system of my life and my business. In my first three years with the app, I completed recurring processes manually, taking each step one by one. And then those procedures radically changed when Notion opened its API, which allows users to integrate Notion with other apps and automation tools. So no longer am I posting to individual social platforms, manually logging financial transactions, or managing meetings in disparate apps. These functions and many others are now automated. So by automating their workspaces, teams and individuals are becoming more efficient and more effective. Delegating their mindless tasks to computers creates time to advance their initiatives rather than just maintain them. It boosts sales by automating communications at each stage of the funnel. And meanwhile, it reduces the need for expensive manpower. So let's explore opportunities to automate your Notion workspace by leveraging the new API. So what's an API? Well, an application programming interface or an API allows apps to interact. And the integrated apps can exchange information and make updates to one another. So one common example is a synced contact list. Adding, modifying, or deleting a contact in Google Contacts can make the same change in your contacts database in Notion. And then conversely, if you update your contacts database, Google Contacts will reflect that change. And you can do the same with calendar events, among many other types of information from various apps. And then so what's the Notion API? Well, using the API, developers can create custom integrations that connect Notion with their apps. And meanwhile, non-developers can use official integrations from Notion partners, and we'll focus on those everyday users. So the configuration process varies by service, but generally speaking, an administrator will establish an integration that functions like a user of your workspace. And after initial configuration, you can grant that integration access to any database, which allows the connected service to read and edit that database. And with the initial release of its API, Notion offers three official integrations. So one is Typeform, which is a tool for creating beautiful interactive online forms. And with the official Notion integration, you can automatically send form submissions to a database in your workspace. So after publishing your form and creating a corresponding Notion database, you can configure the integration by clicking connect at the top of your Typeform page. And at launch, the API also connects Notion with services that allow you to create custom integrations with apps that don't yet have official integrations with Notion. So these services act as translators that deliver the functions of APIs in a visual interface. And they also offer features for automating actions in your workspace without involving another app, such as recreating a recurring task. And Zapier is the most popular of these services. And within Zapier, the customizations you create are called Zaps. So each Zap consists of a trigger followed by one or more actions. And in a sense, you're defining the statement, if trigger, do actions. So for example, if a contact is added to Google Contacts, then create an entry in the Contacts database in Notion. If a prospect enters a new sales stage, send an email to that prospect. If an item is added to the Tweets database, publish it to Twitter. And if it's the first day of the month, email a report to stakeholders. So in my deep dive into the API debut, you'll find detailed instructions for configuring Zapier with Notion, and I'll link to that within the description of this video. 
So among all example implementations of the API, you'll notice a single constant, and that is databases. Google Contacts syncs with a Contacts database. Tweets are published from a Tweets database. Typeform sends submissions to a database. Sales emails are triggered from a deals database. Recurring tasks are rescheduled in a tasks database. Google Calendar syncs with an events database. Shopify syncs with orders and contacts databases. You get the picture. And therefore, a database first structure will optimize your workspace for integrations powered by the API. And in fact, using databases rather than standalone pages has always been my foremost strategy for any Notion workspace. And in addition to supporting integrations, centralizing your information in master databases will keep your information accurate and consistent. It will reduce redundancy and vulnerability to human error. It'll automate contextual filters. It'll summarize data. It'll support long-term scalability and migration. And it will leverage Notion's most distinctive feature, which is its unique blend of documents and databases. So as the crux of my bulletproof methodology, this database-centric approach is known as the bulletproof principle. And I detail that further in my guide to optimizing your workspace for the Notion API, which I'll also link to within the description of this video. So with support for more than 3,000 apps, Zapier offers limitless ways to automate your workspace. And here are some questions you can consider when you're identifying the most beneficial automation opportunities. The first is, what are your recurring tasks? So we all have tasks that we perform daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annually. And all of these tasks can be automatically rescheduled or recreated when completed, and many of them can be automated altogether. And then when in your workflow do you transfer information? When Notion was a closed environment, users manually migrated information to and from other apps. They'd recreate contacts, import expenses, and convert emails to themselves to tasks. So now the official Typeform integration automatically migrates form submissions, and with Zapier, you can automatically exchange information with almost any other app. And then what are your standardized procedures? In addition to recurring tasks, you have sequences you perform in particular circumstances. You might have checklists for onboarding new clients and employees, each of which involve collecting and distributing information, creating profiles, and so forth. And you'll find that a considerable portion of these processes can be automated using Zapier. And then lastly, where is there redundancy? In computer programming, a repeated action typically signals the need for a reusable function. And with Zapier, you can configure automations that perform the same action for various triggers, which minimizes redundancy in your personal and professional operations. So never again should you find yourself recreating the same email for multiple recipients. And lastly, let's look at three common automations you can build easily with Zapier to save time, maximize efficiency, bolster performance, and reduce costs. And in future posts to the Zapier blog, to Notion VIP, and my YouTube channel, I'll walk through the implementation of these and many other uses of the Notion API. So the first is recurring tasks. And along with the API itself, recurring tasks is a long-standing feature request among Notion users. And prior to the API, users would formulate elaborate mechanisms for facilitating recurring tasks. Some would pre-configure a year's worth of tasks. And my own bulletproof task system indicates when a task requires rescheduling. But ultimately, that rescheduling occurs manually. But now a Zap can create a new task at a regular frequency automatically. Your trigger will be an internal Zapier app called Schedule by Zapier. And then the action will be create database item in your tasks database. And then our next example is a unified contact list. So Notion's unique blend of databases and documents makes it the perfect place to manage contacts. But contacts will always remain in disparate services like email marketing platforms, CRMs, online stores, and member communities. And 
Previously, in order to consolidate these lists, you'd have to export, reformat, and import each one manually. But with Zapier, you can keep a unified contacts database up to date automatically. So for each platform containing contacts, you'll create a Zap triggered by a new or updated contact. And then for the actions, Zapier can search for the contact in the contacts database then update it if it exists and otherwise create it. So Zapier supports Google Contacts, Outlook, Shopify, WooCommerce, BigCommerce, MailChimp, MailerLite, Salesforce, Pipedrive, HubSpot, and myriad other services from which you might want to import contacts. And then our last example is to publish content directly from Notion to social media, to blogs, and even to your website. So if you want, Notion can be a full-fledged content management system. And database properties allow you to provide the core content and supporting information for each post, and then you can manage production all the way through publishing. So with Zapier, you can post from Notion to Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, WordPress, Webflow, and numerous other online platforms. So for social media posts, one approach is to keep a drafted social posts database and then an independent database for each platform, such as tweets and LinkedIn posts. And then for each of those platform-specific databases, create a zap triggered by new entries. And the action will then be to post to the platform and perhaps update a status property, or a publish date property. So that's a snapshot of a few common automations, but like I said, I'll be publishing detailed examples to the Zapier blog, to Notion VIP, and to my YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe to all three, and if you hit any snags as you tinker with integrations in Notion, you can always tweet at William Nutt.